Hi guys, it's Stribbers, and welcome to episode 36 of PGR2 Road to Platinum. So in the last episode, we unlocked the Extreme Series, and we did the first four races in that series, and we're going to be doing the next four races in this series. Uh, we've got two one-on-ones, a timed run, and a cone challenge to do. Uh, both one-on-ones are one lap, and they're against different cars. So um, we've used the F50, we've used the F40, we've also used the Porsche GT2. So it was between the Jaguar or the Ascari, uh, and I don't really like driving the Jaguar, so I've gone for the Ascari KZ1. Uh, pretty good car. I'd say it's probably the third best in this group, but it is hard to, uh, to say which is the third best, but I'd probably go for this one. Um, it's got pretty decent acceleration. It's up there with the F40. Um, as you can see, we were sort of uh, catching up to the Jag there before I had to ease off the accelerator, otherwise I was going to collide with the back of him. But we get onto a straight, and we're able just to slingshot past him nearly. Jag just changed gear there, so we are just about going to get the job done before this corner. But the Ascari's low end acceleration is very strong, whereas the Jag is much stronger towards the, uh, the top end speed and acceleration. But the biggest problem with this car is the understeer, unfortunately. Um, as you can see there, I was accelerating around that corner and then it just understeers and it was just about to hit the barrier so I had to um, compensate for that by braking. So it's definitely the worst point of the Ascari. Other than that, it's a brilliant car. And here we see it going over some uneven surfaces and uh, squirreling into the barrier. Yeah, it's not very not very good over those sort of surfaces either. But um, a very good car in a straight line. Definitely up there with the best uh, in this class. But anyway, we managed to beat the Jag there. Managed to get past it on the straight and stay ahead. So that's that one-on-one -on -one down. Now this next one-on-one -on -one is actually against the Ferrari F40. Which is a very difficult race because the track isn't very big. Isn't very long. So you need to get past him as quick as possible. So I chose the Ascari again for this race, but I don't recommend doing so because it is very difficult to beat the F40 on this track, as it does corner loads better than the Ascari, and it's, the Ascari is not really any quicker either. As we can see, the F40 got a poor start there. It doesn't usually get uh, a poor start as that. It had trouble getting traction. It usually starts a lot better. Uh, and we're actually ahead of him on the first corner because he... Um, went too close to the first corner and took the wrong line so it enabled us to go past him and um, so we're just about staying ahead here but when we get to the more technical part here you will see the F40 there he is right behind trying to close the gap trying to overtake goes for another bite there it is so much better around the corners the F40 so this took me quite a few attempts in this car to finally beat the F40 as you can see it's really not a long track it's it's going to be under 50 seconds by the time we finish this lap. Yeah, 47 seconds. So I would re would recommend using the F50 or the F40 against this F40 to make life easier because that really wasn't very easy whatsoever. But we still did it after many attempts. So that's the two one-on-ones down. Very quick races. Under a minute each, so that's nice. Or I think the first one was under a minute, actually. So we move on to the next event. Um... F50 is what I chose for this one. Timed run. Any hot lap and timed run, I always pick the F50. It really does give you the best chance. Um, the F40 is not a bad shout for this one, though, because there is uh, quite a few straights. As you can see, we're on this straight, and then on the other side, there's an identical straight before the finish, or before the corner to the finish. Uh, but there's two laps in this, uh, I think it's Washington we're in. And it's a bit of a strange track. I believe it's the same track that we use the Stingray in the American Muscle Series to do a uh, hot lap or a timed run. So it's a symmetrical track, a little bit strange, but um, nevertheless we'll give it our best shot. So we've just done a couple hairpins and we're coming up to this one as well. Really having to hug the inside of the apex as you can see the braking zone there. Tire marks on the track. Now I went too wide here didn't come close enough to the apex, we did lose some speed through that uh, through that corner. So we'll have to try again on a second lap to try and get a better line through there. Not doing too badly here. Coming up to the finish line and we do a 1.6.8, basically a 0 
So if we do another lap like that, we should be absolutely fine. Not a difficult track to learn this one. Um, it's quite a wide track. Not too many corners. Um, but I say these hairpins are probably the most annoying bits to learn. Really having to uh, be close to that apex and not power slide on the way out. Because it is quite easy to do that. Especially if you're driving the F40. The F50 is not as bad. And we're coming through this chicane section. Up into another sort of hairpin. It's more of a 90 degree corner that one. Coming towards the second hairpin of the uh, the track. Again, sticking to the inside there. Is power sliding a bit, but the F50 is very good at uh, putting its power down. So you shouldn't have too many problems. And that was a much better line through that corner. Allowing us to carry the speed a lot better. But we've got under 10 seconds left now. So it re it's really easy to bottle it when you hear the uh, the timer counting down. as it makes you panic a little bit. We managed to take that corner okay. And I think we did slightly slower that lap. Probably a tenth slower in the end. But we got a clean race. Which is unusual for me. Um, but we passed by 0.6 of a second. Six tenths. So it's in the region of being okay. A little bit comfortable. Not too bad at all. And the final um, final event for this episode is a cone challenge. Now you can use the F50 or the F40 for this one. I personally like using the F40 because you can get it to power slide when you want to. It's very easy to... Uh, keep the uh, combo going between cone gates with this car. That being said, this cone challenge is actually one of the easiest ones we've faced so far. There's not any uh, complicated sections where you have to link cone gates together other than just driving through the cone gates. For the most part anyway. Um, you can get away with just conservative driving through the cone gates. Um, and yeah, as long as you're in one of the quicker cars, so you've got enough speed in the, uh, the straight sections, where it asks you to go fast, then you should be okay. These bits are a little bit annoying. See, I got very close to hitting that. And I did a little power slide on the way out. Which is why I like using this car, because you can just get it to do that so easily. You literally just got to put full power on and it'll kick the back end out for you. But yeah, this is so much easier than that um, Grand Touring cone challenge that we did, where we had to link the cones together in multiple different ways. Whereas, as I said, this one, you can just drive through most of the cones. And I've not really been putting full power down on many of the, uh, the sections. There's only this section coming up where you'll need to accelerate properly from this point. Full acceleration through here. As once you pass this cone gate, you'll only have this clean section. And then through this cone gate. And this caught me out as well. You have to break over this crest because it is to the left or more of the middle of the track, that cone gate. So that's a little bit sneaky. Come around here, also doing a little power slide. Again, the F40 being great for that sort of thing. And we're nearly done one lap. Coming around this section, and unfortunately through this cone gate, I didn't do a slide. So I was just too late to keep the combo going through that other cone. So we do lose our combo, but we bank 6,000. So I thought, um, if we do a similar... Um, a similar lap to that one, but managing to keep the combo going through the whole thing, we might just do it. So I carried on going, repeating what we did in the first lap. Again, not being too stupid with the speed, driving quite conservatively through most part of the track. As you can get away with uh, with um, not going too quickly, as they're not too far away from each other, the cone gates. Again, doing a little slide around there. Struggled a little bit more to get the back end out that time, but you can just tap the handbrake if you're having any problems getting the back end to uh, to come out to get that slide in. And there are a few sections here where you do go over um, bumpy sections. Um, there was an example before that that hairpin a while back, and it does make you either get airtime or go on two wheels, which also helps your combo. Of course, the more slides you throw in, the higher your combo goes. Uh, you know, the higher the number it goes. But again, we're on this um, section where we can floor it. Making sure to break on the crest of this hill so we can go to the middle of the track there and not get caught out by that. There, you see, we went on two wheels there. Even though you couldn't really see it, it did lift off slightly, so apparently that counts. Power sliding in there and very, very nearly hitting the inside of that cone. That was a little bit close. But coming around that section and getting much better speed through there, so we are carrying our combo around there. 
and a little power slide to finish it off. So I really could have done that in a full combo that race. It really wasn't too difficult. It's definitely one of the easier cone challenges. But with the clean race, on top of all the other stuff, we do just about manage to pass there. Only just though. 310, not as comfortable as the other margins we passed by, but that was certainly okay. And we're way over a million kudos now. Rank 46, another 20 tokens. Very nice indeed. So that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. So in the next episode, we've got um, a hot lap to do and three street races. Um, so that should be good. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, please like the video and consider subscribing if you're new for more content. And I'll see you next time.